Hi there, welcome to Paper Talk. I know it's a tiny bit later than build, but it's going to be worth the wait, okay, because we've got an England World Cup squad special this morning and we're going to take a look at how the papers have covered Gareth Southgate's selections. A very warm welcome to our guest who is Martin Ziegler, Times Chief Sports Reporter and we've got broadcaster Nabade Haroon as well. So good morning to you both. We're going to get stuck in to the Daily Mail and Chris Sutton has given his verdict on England's 26-man squad. So there's it's out of five. There's a few five-star ratings in there. There's there's nothing lower than a three except for one player who got one star, and that is Harry Maguire. Martin, I'm going to come to you first. Why do you think Maguire's only got one star? Hi, Bella. Um, I suppose it's because he's, he's really ha didn't have a great season last year, um, as Chris Sutton points out. And um, he's, he hasn't been a regular starter at all. He's played, he started a handful of games this season. So you're... Chris Sutton says he, you know, you can't ease somebody into a season and a World Cup, um, and I, you know, I tend to agree with him. Really, it's a, it's a tricky one. Always going to be on the plane. Uh, he's one of Gareth Southgate's most trusted players, uh, and any time England ever needed Maguire, he's never failed England. I think club football and um, international football are almost in two different worlds. Um, and I, in my opinion, I think who else would he trust that he can throw in there that he knows is a good character and knows gets along with the team, knows that uh, the team see him as a leader and can put him in for the first World Cup game and ask him to do a job. I don't think, one, he didn't have many options, and two, uh, Maguire has not ever failed Southgate's trust. OK, so, Nabay, it sounds like you definitely think Maguire should be on that plane there. And, Martin, what about you? Should he be going? I think he's not a bad sort of standby if, you know, things, if things start, aren't going right. and Because he's got such a threat at set pieces, maybe, you know, he can... As a, as a sort of last ditch, throw him up front, see if he can get a goal from a, from a header, from a cross. I think that. But apart from that, I think perhaps he probably shouldn't be going. Okay, right. We're going to let's move on to the times then, because we have to talk about James Madison. Henry Winter has had his say on this inclusion in the England squad, saying that he shouldn't start, but that he is the perfect super sub. What do you make of it, Nabade? Uh, I personally just did a start 11 for the first game against Iran and I had Madison in there. I think he's the most informed player um, that in, in terms of league football. Obviously, we haven't seen him play for England, but then with Calvin Phillips coming back from a, a long-term injury, um, Mason Mount being well out of form and also in and out of Southgate's plans on a regular basis, Jude Bellingham the same. Uh, I think you come up against Iran, you've got a, a chance to play in possession against the team. So you want a player like Madison who loves possession, who can unlock doors. Um, and I think he'll be very, very handy in those games where it is tight. And I imagine all three of the games in the group will be tight where the opposition sit back. Uh, so personally, for me, I would start him in maybe two of the first three and then see how he goes from that point onwards. OK, Nabay, that's interesting. Can you please tweet us your starting 11 against Iran? Because we've been asking viewers to do that this morning and I haven't seen yours, so can you please tweet us that after? And I'll, I'll make sure to read it out, of course. I'll, I will, of course, credit you for it as well. Right, Martin, do you think Madison should start or do you think he'll be most effective off the bench? No, I don't think he should start at all. Um, I mean, I know there's strange circumstances. There's no build-up matches that you normally have before the World Cup. But he, he's... he's He's only played one substitute appearance three years ago. I know he's on great form in the Premier League, but I think that's far too much of a risk. I think, as Henry Winter writes in the Times, his coming off the bench is probably the best option for him. I think Bellingham is really, really good for England and for his club, and I think the team should be actually be built around him. In my opinion, I think with uh, Jude Bellingham, I love him as a footballer, but I think when we, when we played against Italy, you could see that he, he can't play as a six next to Rice. That's not because he's not a good footballer. It's just not his profile uh, or his style. And Southgate likes his two number sixes to sit in and essentially try and dictate the game whenever they can. Whereas that's not really Jude's, Jude's sort of um, position or how he likes to play. And I think what we've seen when he's played for England is that um, it, it works to an extent that you get to watch a footballer who is technically great, but then in, in a tactical sense, there's holes everywhere and which Italy absolutely exploited. It may work against Iran and Wales and USA, but I think if you play that system for three games and then go into the knockouts, you have to play that system again. So I feel these are the games where you get to try the players 
because uh, I can't imagine we're going to change system over and over again once we're into the knockouts. That's assuming mm. England get to the knockouts. <laughs> little disclaimer on the end there. Um, look, the, the Daily Star not so sure about Madison's call up. Their headline is Southgate is rolling the dice with Madison. Um, this is the Star's chief sports writer, Jeremy Cross. Martin, what, what has he had to say in this piece? Why does he think that England are taking a bit of a risk here? Well, I think it is that basically James Madison is on tried at international level, and it's it's a big step up. Jeremy Cross saying um, he's he's had as a one substitute appearance that was three years ago. Then he had this issue when he was said he was ill and was then pictured in, in a casino, sort of raising some sort of questions about it, that sort of, that approach. So. Uh, um, I think he thinks it, it, it's too big a risk for Southgate to take it at such an important time. I just feel that uh, if if we're if we're going to mention obviously the fact that Madison three years ago had issues, um, I think you have to also mention that Rogers himself said at 25 years old he's he's a much more matured character, much more matured person, um, and I don't think there's been any sort of disciplinary issues recently whilst he's been at Leicester. I think it's very difficult to say no to the most informed England player. Um, whether that's a risk in a 26-man squad, I don't really think it is. If Madison doesn't play a single minute, of course, Madison will be quite upset, but he will have had the experience with that squad. And then in the next competition, then I think Southgate will, will put him in again. OK, I want to come on to the Sun now. Um, former Watford and current Birmingham striker Troy Deeney, he's never short of an opinion, is he? Well, in this column, he has asked... What's plan B? Um, and it says the little subheading is limited by no big man. So what Nabaid Adini's worries here about England's plan A? I mean, oh, um, do England play with a big man? Does Southgate play with a big man? Do many teams in um, international football play with a big man that aren't sort of outside, uh, sorry, inside the top five or six international teams? I don't think so. Um, does a plan B even work anymore when you just when you just throw a big man up front? I don't think it does. Um, I was quite surprised by that, to be fair, because what, <laughs> who is the big man? Is it Ivan Tony? That's not his style of play. Um, I just I just don't think England would benefit from playing a big man. I think Martin very rightly said earlier that if that was the situation, you throw Maguire up there mainly just to win flick-ons and compete in the end, potentially get you a goal. What do you think about this, Martin? Do you think England have a big man, so to speak? Um, not really, it's not, and it's not Southgate style. Maybe, maybe Troy was thinking he could be the big man. <laughs> he is pretty big, to be fair. OK, look, Deeney does pick out um, the midfield as being key for England. So, Martin, what did he have to say about that? Yeah, I think, you know, he was saying in a World Cup, you need to be creative, hold on to the ball, um, get a skill, technical level is the most important thing. And, yeah, it's the midfielders we're gonna, where it's going to be won and lost. Yeah, he says in here, I'd build my team around Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham. Those two could be midfield pairing for 10 years. OK, we're going to move on to The Guardian now. And um, the chosen ones, the Southgate got the big calls in his England selection right. That's the headline uh, for Jacob Steinberg's piece there. Jacob has picked out four areas of Southgate's squad. Um, Nabei, tell us what he's had to say about James Madison and then also Marcus Rashford. So, I think the opinion on uh, Madison, it's, it's the Madison conversation will continue throughout the World Cup. I think it's, uh, it's one of those situations whereby uh, whatever Madison does will be um, criticised. But um, about equally, if whatever he does well, um, will be the opposite way around. Um, I think, to be fair, like, it, his opinions on Madison and Rashford were pretty uh, accurate at the time of uh, him writing this piece. But I think that all this will just continue to change on a conveyor belt during the World Cup. And I'd like to know one player that you would both like to have seen in the squad then that's not in there, obviously. Martin, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people felt a bit sorry for Tamori that, um, from AC Milan that won the Serie A but didn't get the call up. But actually, I think um, Mark Gahey at Crystal Palace, the defender, he, he's had a great season. Um, Palace, have, their defence have been 
one of the best in the in the Premier League. And I think you know he's been in England squads before. I think he was very unlucky. And Nabade, what about you? Uh, Martin mentioned him. Tomori for me. Yeah. Yeah, same for me. OK, very quickly, both of you, how far are England going to go in the World Cup? I saved it till last. Nabade, you can start this time. you got a few uh, seconds. Round of... Uh, round of? Oh, my God. Martin? <laughs> yeah, quarter, lose to France in the quarterfinals. Wow, specific. OK, brilliant from you two this morning. Thanks ever so much.